the Sean McVay influence is now in Seattle with Shane Waldron. Waldron had been with McVay in Los Angeles since 2017, where he was the tight ends coach and eventually the passing game coordinator. Seattle's game against the Colts was his first time calling plays. He did an exceptional job of layering, creating counters, and bringing a lot of the McVay influences up north. While it wasn't perfect, there were some issues in the pure drop back game and in some of the change of pace run schemes. He did use motion pretty well, had some clearly defined roles for his players, and created easy opportunities to let Russell Wilson distribute the ball. By now, most people know what the McVay and Shanahan systems are all about. You want to create horizontal flow and misdirection. Then you create counters off of those looks. The first two steps in that are the outside zone and the boot action off of the outside zone. An outside zone, the backside defensive end is usually left unblocked, so you have to find ways to control that edge either with boot action around them or counters going the other way. On their first drive, that's what the Seahawks did against the Colts. They run a boot action with a sail concept off of an outside zone fake. It's the most bread and butter play in the system. The Colts were in cover two, do a good job of covering it, but you can see early how much of an impact the outside zone has on the linebackers. They flow hard to the fake and have to recover to get into position. Despite the ball not being completed and getting minimal yardage, it really sets the precedent for the game and what Waldron wants to do. A few plays later, the Seahawks run outside zone for a gain of five yards. The weak side linebacker is much slower to fill now and isn't involved in the play until late. The outside zone and play action want to force linebackers to think and become passive. And that's exactly what was happening at the start of the game here. In that same opening drive, Waldron threw in the next layer, the jet sweep motion. This again helps create edge control and slow pursuit the other direction. It produces horizontal stress on the defense that freezes the backside of the Colts until well after the handoff. That little minuscule beat and that false step the opposite direction can create lanes and give the opportunity for the offense to create explosive plays. Shane Waldron did a great job of keeping the defense off balance, especially early in the game. Off of the outside zone, boot, and jet sweep, he now uses those same looks to run a tight end screen. He combines all three of those tenets, and the linebackers for the Colts immediately bail to look for the sale concept that they've been seeing in the first few drives. That creates space underneath them for linemen to release on the screen. Sometimes you've got to run your counters to set up your bread and butter. And finally, after a couple drives of showing the, the boot, the jet, and the screen, the base sale concept started to pop open for the Seahawks. The run game has been effective enough to start to bring the Colts out of their too high shell, and Seattle catches them in a late rotation here with their shift before the snap. That leaves one defender to cover their intermediate and short route. As Wilson comes out of the boot action, he identifies that the corner is flat-footed and is starting to edge down to the flats. That leaves the deep out open behind him for a nice chunk gain. The Seahawks and Waldron were just a step ahead of the Colts' defense all day. After using their sail concept to the opposite direction of the run fake, Seattle now throws the sail concept to the same direction as the run fake. The Colts have been conditioned off of the outside zone fake to turn and locate crossers going the other direction. You can see every linebacker here feed up to the run fake and then bail to the opposite side of the run fake, thinking that routes are going to be coming at them from the other side of the field. That lets the running back leverage them the other way for an easy throw and catch for a 17-yard gain. Now that Waldron has shown the jet sweep fake a number of times, he puts in Dwayne Eskridge and actually hands off on the sweep. The Colts are so used to seeing it that they've stopped respecting its threat to the outside. The linebackers have pulled the opposite direction of the sweep because of the run fake, and that helps Eskridge get the edge and a 10-yard gain on the perimeter. When at least one or two pieces of the puzzle are working within the system, it's, it's tough to stop. There's immense flow conflict, and it puts second-level defenders in a bind. However, when Waldron went outside the system and implemented some change-of-pace plays like true dropbacks, some duo or shotgun runs, the success rate was highly variable. Seattle got a lot of their points and big pass plays that way, but they also got their negative and low yardage plays on those looks too. The next step is tying those two philosophies together and blending in what Wilson is comfortable with. Once that's done, they'll have an offense that's really built to sustain. One that can run the ball to Pete Carroll's delight, and one that can let Wilson work outside the pocket and hide an offensive line that's a little bit in flux. With the balance and layering of plays that Waldron showed in week one, the Seahawks are going to be tough to stop, and in a division and conference where they were starting to feel a little bit like the forgotten team, you better not sleep on Seattle. 
Hey guys, I appreciate you watching all the way through. Make sure you drop a comment. Let me know someone, a scheme, idea, person who you want to see broken down here in the future. And make sure to check out the Football 101 series. I'm trying to post that every Monday. And I'll see you guys on the next breakdown.